Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at Duolingo and how you get started in Duolingo. The reason why I'm making this video is that it's incredibly hard to get an idea as to what Duolingo is all about when you first get started. So I'm here on the iPad app. It's very similar on the iPhone. It's not dissimilar on the computer and of course you've got Android applications as well. Now I've been working in Duolingo for a while and that will help me explain to you where everything is. So this is your sort of Duolingo home screen and let's work across these four buttons across the top. So the first one is your languages. I'm learning Spanish. If you had other languages, they would be there. So you can learn multiple languages at a time. The next thing is what are called crowns. Well, they're called crowns today. They could be something else by the time you're looking at this because Duolingo tends to change its interface quite frequently. So these crowns are sort of an indication as to my skill level, if you like. Then we've got this like flame thing with 58 beside it. This is the number of days that I have been consistently using Duolingo. So if I skipped a day, then this would go back to one. The 56 of 20 XP is that I've got a goal to make 20 experience points every day. So that's what the XPs are. And today I've done 56 of my 20. So I'm obviously well ahead today. I've been doing quite a bit of work. You can set your own goal using the edit goal option here. And you can just set it as to what it is that you want to be able to achieve. And so I've done mine at about 10 minutes a day. So that's my goal and this is how I track how far I've progressed towards my goal. And if I don't meet a goal, then one of these days is going to be sort of a different color and my count will have gone back to zero. Now over here are what are called hearts. Well, they're hearts today. Again, they could be something by the time you're looking at this. And hearts are what you use to practice with. Now you get five hearts every 24 hours and they come on a sort of hourly basis. So you can see that I've got 12 minutes before I get my next heart. So sort of every five hours, if you like, you get one more heart and that's for a total of five every day. You need hearts to practice. So to be able to use Duolingo as a free user, you have to have hearts because hearts are what you lose when you make a mistake. And so right now, because I've only got three hearts, I can only make three mistakes before I'm in trouble. And that means I either can't continue to play or I need to do something to build up my hearts again. So one of the things that you can do to build up hearts is to practice. So you get one heart for practicing. So if I go and choose that, let's just go and see what that involves. So I click on practice and now I'm taken through my practice session. Now one of the benefits of using this practice session to earn a heart is that you don't actually lose hearts if you make a mistake. So this is kind of a way that you can entertain yourself in Duolingo if you've run out of hearts. You can come in and practice to try and earn a heart and if you make a mistake it doesn't matter because you're not going to lose any hearts. Even if you had a few you wouldn't lose them. The maximum number of hearts you can have at any time is five. It doesn't go above that, if you like. You can refill hearts out of the jewels, the gems that you've got. And up here you'll see that I've got 4,463 gems. That is because I've been playing a lot and I've been pretty good at what I do. And so I've earned quite a lot of gems. So I could refill my hearts at any time. So I could take my number up to the maximum of five by spending 350 of my gems that are stored up. You can't do a lot with gems. So sometimes it's handy to have those in your sort of wallet if you like that you can refill hearts so that you can continue to practice. I think probably one of the frustrating things is on a day that you really want to do some practice when you keep sort of losing hearts. So if you've got a bit of gems stored up then you can go and buy them at 350 for up to five hearts. So let's just get out of there and let's have a look at the tree structure. This is called a tree in Duolingo. So we have an intro at the top and then we have phrases and travel. This is all in the intro section. So it only has like five elements here in Spanish. You might find that that's different in the language that you're studying. We have some idioms. I'm going to talk about those in just a minute, but let's have a look at these others. So this is still in the intro section here, shopping, school and people. And then we have sort of level one and this is sort of again 
improving your Spanish as you run through these levels. Now, I've done all of these levels. You can see that they all have the number five there in the crown. That means I've leveled up and I've done as much as I can do in those individual sessions. But if I wanted to, I could come back at any time and practice. So let's go to school two here. I'm just going to tap on that. And you'll see here that I could practice and earn 10 experience points for practicing. And that's a nice way sometimes if you don't feel like you're up to something new, you can go and practice something that you already know. But let's keep going here. Actually, let's just exit out of there. And we'll keep going. Here you'll see that emotions I've only got four. So I haven't in inverted commas leveled up in emotions yet. I've got still some learning to do in emotions. So if I tap on emotions, you'll see that I'm at level four out of five in Spanish here. All the levels are up to a maximum of five and I'm at lesson one of four for level four. So if I do another four lessons, then I'll get up to level five and that will sort of close this down. It will get that sort of gold look to it and that will mean that I've finished emotions. People, I'm only up to level two. Fashion, I'm level four. I kind of enjoyed that one. Travel, I'm at level two. Leisure, I'm still at level one. Activities, I'm at level one. Preferences, I'm at level one. But routines, I haven't even started that. That's why it doesn't have anything in it. Now you'll see beyond routines, everything else is grayed out. So the rules here with Duolingo are until you've got the higher level to level one. So until I get routines to level one, so that routines and preference are both at level one, then I can't open up household and restaurant two. And household and restaurant two will open up as soon as I get preference and routines to level one but nothing beyond them will be opened up until I then get household and restaurant to level one. In the levels, you'll find that level one is pretty easy and then they get more difficult level two, then level three, then level four. And so you don't have to do all of that. A lot of people just go through and just do level one all the way through and call that their learning. That's not the way I learn. I prefer to get a bit more in depth. And so what I'm trying to do pretty obviously from my tree is get everything up to level five. But what I also wouldn't do is go and get emotions all the way up to level five before I started people. The reason for this is that you will want variety in your learning. You want to be bringing some topics through. So right now with level one, I've got leisure and activities and preference. So I'm bringing those up. I'm a little way through travel. I'm quite a long way through fashion and emotions. So I will typically want my tree to look a bit like this with some fours, some threes, some twos and some ones. And that just adds variety to my learning. I don't think it's a particularly good idea to sort of binge study. So take a particular topic all the way up to level five because you're just not really absorbing it. It takes time to absorb language. And so that's how you'll work through there. So when you go to, for example, routines, which is brand new for me, I'll just tap on it. Now, this is the first time I've seen routines. I haven't been here before. So what I would do is tap on tips because I want to learn a little bit about what I'm going to see here. So we're looking at some verbs here and then we're doing a small test. So I need to do that test and just choose the right word. So it's obviously going to be voy. And then we've got other things coming through here in your learning. You want to turn your speaker on so that you hear everything that's going on because you're going to hear these words spoken. And in addition, you're going to want to have your microphone accessible because in the microphone, you'll be speaking your answers because a lot of these lessons have things where you're asked to speak along with the native speaker. So they speak and then you repeat what it is that they say and that's a point you know you get something for that or you might need to listen to them saying something because you either have to translate it into your language in my case that's English or you might need to write it in Spanish so you might hear the Spanish language and then write the Spanish language so you're interpreting what you're hearing so once you've done through the tips, you earn five experience points for the tips. So since my challenge each day is 20, I can earn five of those 20 just by reading and working through those tips. And then I would click on start and I would start the lesson. So that's going to be very easy to begin with. It's going to get more difficult. Now, if you're a little bit familiar with the language, perhaps, or once you get going with the language, you can click this sort of key icon here. 
And when you're a free user, you can skip from level zero all the way through to level one just by testing out of it. So this is sort of like, I know a fair bit about this language at this point. Can I skip the beginning bit and go ahead to level one? Now, I don't usually do that, but I did that today just in practicing for this, <laughs> this video. And so I actually went from, in preferences, I went from level zero to level one by testing through. Now you can only do that free in the free version of Duolingo from level zero to level one. If you want to test out, say, from level two to level three, it's going to cost you a certain number of gems. So those 4,000 gems that I've got, I could buy the ability to test up another level. So I think it's time at this stage that we just step through a lesson just so you can see how things are going to work. And for me, I'm going to pick an easy lesson because this is going to be somewhat embarrassing as I step through this lesson. But I'm going to do it pretty quickly so that you can see what it's all about. You'll get some of these hard lessons occasionally. You can earn extra points for it. So there's a couple of ways that you'll get hard lessons. One is you'll get a timed lesson and the other one is you'll just get it hard. I'm gonna say no right now because I don't want to do that, but you can get extra points for doing it. Now, on the free version, you can also earn hearts. So if I need to earn some hearts because I don't have enough, I can earn them by watching an advertisement. I'm not going to do it right now, but that is an option. Out of these options here, I need to select the one that is the correct translation. Then I click to check it. Now I'm hearing that spoken through my speakers and I have to translate it into English. If I'm not sure about a word, I can just tap on the word and I get the description of it. So you get a little bit of help. Doesn't always happen like that, but you can use that. But you really want to be thinking in terms of learning this stuff rather than just pressing to get help. If you make a mistake with a word and you put it up on the line and it's not the one you want, you just drag it off and it just comes back off. So you want to check that before you go ahead because you don't want to lose a heart and any one mistake would be one heart lost. At the top, you can see a sort of progress bar so I know how far through this lesson I am. Now I've just heard them speak this particular sentence as you're learning, you may find it valuable to actually say that word. So you would say area, toma, el, autobus. And if you saw a word that you weren't really 100% familiar with, I would also just sort of spell it to myself. So I'd go A-U-T-O-B-U accent S. So I'm sort of learning as I'm going. You need to help yourself a little bit because Duolingo won't do all the work for you. So it's very easy to just tap words down the bottom and translate the sentence and end up not really understanding what quite it is that you've done. So if you want to help yourself, speak it as you go. Now down the bottom, you'll also see that there's a discuss option. So if you're not 100% sure what's going on, you can press the discuss option and you'll see other people's conversation about this particular exercise. If you really think there's a mistake, you can click report, but just be aware that particularly in these early lessons, millions of people have gone through here and the chance is that you're not actually seeing a mistake in the program. It's a mistake that you have actually made. Now you might have noticed up in the top right corner that my number of hearts just increased. I was due another heart and it's just been credited to my account. Now here I'm going to need to have access to my speakers because I need to hear what they're speaking so that I can actually translate that or put that in Spanish. So if you tap the really big one, you're going to get it spoken at sort of normal speaking pace. And if you're familiar with Spanish, it's like the second fastest language spoken. And so that can be just gobbledygook. It can be really just a mess of words. So if you need it spoken more slowly, just tap the one that's got the tortoise on it and you'll hear it spoken one word at a time. 
So what I typically do is tap the big one and I'll tap it over and over and over again as I'm building up my sentence. And if I'm not 100% sure by the end of it that I've got it right, then I'll tap the tortoise. Because trying to learn the language at a spoken speed is obviously going to be to your advantage later on. It's very easy to use the tortoise to do basically all the work for you if you try and use the language at or listen to the language at its spoken rate, do your very best and then dub double check with the tortoise to see if you've got it right. Now I need to start translating. So you can pull words on and off if you make a mistake, so don't worry about that. It's pretty easy to get rid of the ones you don't want. Now, I've just done 10 and I got 10 right in a row. So the little Duolingo owl is just coming to say sort of well down. Let's keep going. At this point, I'm not going to show you how bad my accent is and how bad I'm doing here. But what you would do is you would press that little speaker and have the native speaker speak the sentence for you. And then you'll tap the tap to speak button and you'll speak it. And if you make a mistake, you just speak the word again. So it's very clear which words you got right and which words you still don't get right. And so you just want to persevere until it tells you that it's okay or it just gives up on you and lets you go one step ahead. Now in this case, I need to actually type the Spanish. So this is where I really need to understand the Spanish language to get this right. And so now I've finished the end of this lesson. And so I got 10 experience points there for that lesson. I'll click continue. I get five extra points as a combo bonus. And then I'll just click to continue. Now, because I'm on the free version, I get an ad to keep education free, but I'm just going to tap to close that. And because it's 13 hours, Bill, 18 hours before the New Year's Eve offer is about to expire, I'm getting an ad for Duolingo as well. So now you can see that my activities have gone. I'm still in level one, but I'm ready for lesson two out of four lessons. And when I complete the other lessons, then I'm going to go ahead to level two for activities. And so that's basically what you're going to be doing with Duolingo is just working through these lessons. You want to allow yourself plenty of time. You want to have your speaker available and you ideally also want to have your microphone available. So now let's have a look at the things across the bottom of the screen here. These three little dots are what you tap when you want to actually go to practice. So let me just go to stories here first and you'll see that the dots are no longer highlighted. Well, if I tap the dots, I go back to where I'm working in Duolingo. Then you've got stories. Now you unlock stories once you get to level one. So let's just go back to Duolingo and we've got the intro section here, which is all of down to here. And here is level one or section one sort of starting. And so because I'm in section one, I get access to set one of stories. And these are stories that you can just read and learn from. And so you hear things and you read things. So it's a nice little sort of interactive entertainment, if you like. And obviously you're learning things that you didn't know as you're working through them, particularly if you start reading stories when you've just started a section. So when you're at the beginning of section one, you're going to find a lot of the stuff in these stories is unfamiliar to you, but it's easy to follow along. This has nothing to do with your basic learning. So this is sort of like just an added extra, if you like. Then the face down the bottom, that's your settings. And so these are your achievements. Well, I'm at level 10 of Regal. I've no real clue as to what that is, but 
I've got some crowns and I'm headed towards pearl leg. I'm going to talk to you about that in just a minute. And there are other things. So you're going to find that when you first get started, that there are a lot of these that you can achieve. And what they're trying to do is give you a sort of game interface. So if you like challenges and games and meeting sort of targets and doing better, then these are where you're going to find your achievements. Now, the next thing is quite interesting. These are levels. And so it took me a while before I even discovered that there were levels here. And by then I was like halfway through them. So what these are is 10 levels and you're put into a group with 50 people, I think it is. Let me just check. 50 people and you're with them for a week. You don't actually see or talk to them, but you're just in this sort of list with them. And what happens is that the top 10 are in what's called a promotion zone. So they're going to go to the next level next time. So if they're still in this top 10, when two days, three minutes and 23 seconds has expired, they're going to go up to the next level. Then the next people in this sort of mid zone, which includes me, are just going to stay where they are. So we're going to be in Amethyst League. And the people down the bottom the last 10 are going to be demoted. So these people are at risk of going from Amethyst down to the next league, whatever this green one is. So this is sort of like a league table where you can meet a challenge. And sometimes I've looked and thought, I've been up at number 11 and I've been thinking, oh, you know, if I sat here and did another hour's work on Duolingo, then maybe I could get solidly into these top 10 and I could go up to another league. It's just whether you respond to that and whether that's the sort of game you want to play. But again, ultimately you're trying to learn a language, so just be aware of that, I guess. But that's the league. And so you're gonna be put into this league with people. And then when the time has expired, then you're gonna go into a fresh league and you'll all start at zero. And it's sort of open slather as to how far you can get up during that seven day period. The last thing is the shop. And as you know, just up in the top right corner here are my diamonds, gems, whatever. These are things that I can spend money on. So I've got 4,463 of them. That's quite a bit, actually. It took me quite a while to sort of get that together. So don't expect to be more than a few hundred at a time. You can earn by doing a wager. So I always do the double or nothing, which is I put a 50 gem wager up each week against maintaining a seven day streak. So if I maintain my seven day streak, I get my 50 gems back plus another 50 gems. And so I've been doing that. So that's a easy way for me to earn 50 gems. A streak freeze means that I can protect my streak. I've never used that, but that would allow you to sort of take a day off and still not lose your streak if those things like streaks are important to you unlimited hearts you have to buy duolingo plus to get that so you can't actually buy that with gems but you can buy a heart refill so i could take my hearts if i was down to zero or one i could take them up to five five being the maximum number of hearts you can have by paying 350. occasionally i do that occasionally i'll just have a really bad day where just nothing goes right and yet i still want to do some practice and so i'll blow through my hearts really really quickly and so I might actually go for a heart refill. If you want your owl to look cute, then you can buy various outfits for your owl. So you can spend 400, 600 or 1000 gems on outfitting your owl. Now there's also idioms and proverbs and flirting and you can pay 1000 each for those. Now I did buy idioms and proverbs. I have to say that that's probably the biggest disappointment that I had. I spent 1000 to get access to them. But because of where I was in Duolingo, they didn't really make a lot of sense. It was teaching me things that had no relevance to what I was learning elsewhere. The language and the form of how things were put together in the idioms and proverbs was just like, <laughs> just made no sense to me. So I'm not sure that I would actually buy those. I certainly won't probably buy be buying flirting. But idioms and proverbs, I didn't actually see a value in that at the level that I was at. So just a heads up on that. So a few other things before you progress. As you go through, you'll find that when you get to level five, everything turns gold. We've talked about that already, but occasionally you'll sort of flick back and you'll see that they've got like a break through them. I don't have any that are broken right now, but it's really obvious what they are because they've got like this crack running through them. 
And what that is, is a reminder to practice. So what it is, is that you've lost your level five for that particular skill. And so if you tap on it and practice, just do one session successfully, then you get that skill back. So it's turned back into gold. The reason for this is that Duolingo wants to encourage you to review things that you already should know to make sure that you actually do remember them. When I started doing that, it was a bit of an eye opener to me because I had forgotten some really important words. And so it's really valuable to go back and bring those skills back up, you know, stick them back together again when the eggs, they call them cracked eggs, I think. I'm not sure why, because there's only eggs in people, but there's no eggs in these other logos. But it's going to be really obvious that there's a big white crack running through it. And you can earn some extra points for going back and practicing. I find that's a really good thing to do on a day that I'm not feeling particularly inspired to go back and revise things I already know is sort of like I'm doing something but I'm not having to bust my brain on learning something new sometimes that's really helpful so I think that's pretty much a sort of getting started with Duolingo the things that I wish that I had known when I was getting started simply because you can be looking at this interface and thinking what is all of this and why can't I do things or what what are these hearts and stuff like that I've been on Duolingo free. I'm really happy with that, but the 2020 offer was so good. I think I'll be upgrading to that tonight. But if you just want to do free, you can certainly do free. There's no penalty in doing that. You're not missing out on very much. You will need to watch ads. You will need to have to keep track of your hearts because hearts are going to be important when you're running the free version. But remember that you can always get a heart by practicing so that's always of value there if you run out of hearts you can always just go and practice and you're learning a language so that has value too you'll find that duolingo on the web at duolingo.com forward slash learning is somewhat useful but not as useful as it should be they really should have done a getting started video and they didn't um, if you've got questions go there and see if you can look up and find some answers i have found some answers to questions that i've had but it hasn't been particularly easy. And that's why I made this video, because this is the video that I would like to have had so that I could have understood Duolingo and not have to work it out all by myself. So best of luck if you've got questions, post them in the question area or the comments section below. I'll try and give you a hand. This is not typically the kind of video that I make. So if you really want me to make another one on Duolingo and if you're finding this helpful, just let me know and I'll see what I can do. So basically this is going to be my getting started with Duolingo video. Wish you all the best. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me here on my YouTube channel.